Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Before we dive into today's tune-up, I wanted to remind everybody about our big 5,000 subscriber full deck giveaway. For your chance to win a 100 card Marin of Clan Nell Toth deck, click the link up top or look for this video. Today's tune-up comes from user Sparks, who writes, Hi Chris, big fan of the channel. With a new printing of Toshira Yumazawa coming up in a new secret layer, I was thinking about dusting off my old deck list and updating it. Could you take a look and let me know if I'm missing any sweet tech? I want to keep the budget reasonable, and if there are any infinite combos you can think of, I'm okay with including them. Alright, let's take a look at this mono black spell slinger style list, starting with our commander. Toshiro Yumazawa is a single printing 3 mana human samurai from all the way back in Betrayers of Kamigawa. Yes, a new printing is coming up, so it looks like a lot more people will be getting their hands on this very unique commander. Toshiro has Bushido 1, meaning when he blocks or becomes blocked he gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. The big benefit is in his next line of text. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we can recast an instant in our graveyard. Note that this isn't until end of turn, and the card is exiled after we cast it. And we have to cast it right away as part of a trigger from the creature dying. We don't get to bank that cast. This means we can double up on our spells, and makes us lean very heavily into targeted removal. Anything that can take out multiple creatures while leaving Toshiro around nets us a lot of value. Note that Toshiro's ability is targeted, meaning we can't recast a spell we just cast to take out a creature. It won't be in our graveyard yet to target. This means we want to churn through spells reliably while filling our hand or graveyard. It's important to note that a list with Toshiro at the helm is going to be very board control heavy. It's not going to be really fun to play with and will shut down a lot of opponent's strategies. If that's okay with your playgroup, or it's the kind of game you want, that's awesome. Toshiro is actually a lot like Turgrid God of Fright in this instance. You can expect to have resources stripped from you, be it creatures in play or cards from hand, and sitting down from across from it is instantly a challenge. This may also make you, as the Toshiro player, a bit of a target right away. When playing against Toshiro, limit the additional value the player can get by removing the commander over and over again. At just 2 toughness, it's relatively easy to get it from costing 3 mana to 7 or 9 mana. That's going to slow down this deck's game plan a lot. It's hard to cast removal spells when you're spending your turns recasting your commander. Now, looking at your existing list, I can see some really solid inclusions already. I can see that the last updates you made were from Strixhaven with the additions of a few Magecraft cards like Sedgemore Witch. Since we're likely to cast 1-2 to two spells per turn, benefiting from it is going to generate us a lot of value and this is a fantastic add. Also from Strixhaven is Auric Lore Mage, which tutors us cards to our graveyard. In this deck, that might as well be a tutor to hand since we can recast instants from the yard. An excellent inclusion. And you've got Professor Onyx in the list, another way for us to grind value from casting spells as we drain the table whenever we cast or copy a spell. On top of being a card advantage engine, this is an excellent, excellent add in the 99. Now, with Professor Onyx in mind, you had asked about infinite combos, and the Professor here is part of a mono-black infinite combo you could potentially include. And it is as simple as Professor Onyx plus Chain of Smog. You target yourself with Chain of Smog, allowing you to copy it as many times as you want with the cost of emptying your hand. That triggers Professor Onyx's Magecraft for each copy, draining the whole table. While this can be stopped, typically by countering the Chain of Smog copy once your hand is empty, Toshiro grants us the ability to cast any instance we may have discarded, mitigating some of the risk in going for it. My friends, the Spike Feeders did a great Better Noah combo about this, linked up top. And on top of this, you already have one of the best ways to leverage removal into winning the game, Revel and Riches. One of my favorite cards, not only will this help you cast spells from your yard if you stack your triggers right, but with enough volume of creatures dying, you can just win the game. As for your spells, I like a lot of the inclusions, from reanimation effects like Grim Return, to rituals like the classic Dark Ritual, to removal spells like Malicious Affliction. These all seem really solid. One of the downfalls of the deck, however, is its need to be mana hungry. Ideally, you want to be casting a spell on each opponent's turn for maximum value. 
With your average mana value at 3, it means that you'll want 6 or 9 mana to really get your engine humming effectively. You've got Black Market in the list to help with this, absolutely a card we want in, even if it's going to be near the top of our curve. It's going to get us the mana to cast spells on our turn, while holding up mana to cast spells on other players' turns. And you've got the classic Urborg Cabal Coffers combo in here to generate enough mana on your own turn to sling a few spells. You also have Cabal Coffers at home in Magus of the Coffers and Crypt Ghast, though both come down later than your average mana value. This is going to require a bit more leverage and ensuring the game is going a little bit longer to really capitalize on. Jet Medallion, on the other hand, is where you want your mana ramp in this style of deck. Casting multiple spells each turn is ideal, and the more spells you cast on each turn, the more value you get from the medallion. More treasure generation would really help the deck too. Being able to bank <laughs> mana to use when you get a trigger ratchets up the long-term value and overall value you can get from your commander. Horde Robber, Grim Hireling, and a reusable instant like Deadly Dispute that refunds mana would be great adds. However, with all three, I'd recommend making the deck a little more creature heavy than it is currently. You've got just 12 creatures in the list, so let's see how we can lean both into a heavier creature focus and keep spell slinging intact. Right away, I'd want to look at some spells that do a bit of everything we want, ensuring they're an instant so we can get additional value, ensuring they remove creatures so we get more triggers, and making tokens so we have more bodies. Starting small, we have Fungal Infection. This is a 1 mana instant that shrinks a creature by 1 and can turn what was a trade or winning combat into a losing combat as a nasty trick. It also makes you a 1-1 sapperling, meaning it's instant, removal, and makes a body, a great overlap of all of the synergies we're looking for. Spoils of Blood is another 1 mana instant that we can reuse, making us an XX Black Horror where X is the number of creatures that died this turn. Considering we'll be removing a lot of creatures, that's perfect for our goals. Then we have Return of the Dreadmarn out of Kaldheim. This instant makes us a 2-2 black zombie for each non-token creature that died this turn, not just our creatures. So if we can remove a few creatures with a single spell, then cast or recast Rise, that can turn our opponent's army into ours very quickly. Then we have one of my favorite cards that I feel is underutilized in Sat's Will. This instant is an edict at instant speed, making each opponent sacrifice their highest power creature. With Toshiro out, that alone nets us three more triggers. But it also exiles each opponent's graveyard and makes us a few 0-1 black thralls in the process. They aren't attacking powerhouses, but they'll soften any swings that come our way. Now naturally, if we are upgrading this deck, we should be considering consistency. We do have a two-card infinite combo, but no way to consistently get either piece. Your existing list lacks tutors outside of Vampiric Tutor, so consider Demonic Tutor as a sorcery speed option. But there are also two instant speed tutors that you may want to consider in Insidious Dreams and Mausoleum Secrets. Insidious Dreams even lets you pitch an instant, which you could recast on the next death of an opponent's creature, mitigating that drawback. And Mausoleum Secrets is an instant speed tutor that goes straight to your hand, but you will need creatures in your yard to help you get bigger spells from it. Overall, I think your list just needs a few small tweaks and you'll be ready with an up-to-date deck when you finally get that new Toshiro secret layer in hand. And who knows what great goodies we'll be getting out of the upcoming sets Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow. Let me know what you think of this list, linked in the description below, and what you would add if you were building it. And, as always folks, good luck and have fun! As always, a huge thanks to our patrons. We could not do this without you. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems. Ben Frain, Sterling Langford, Will Briggs, Ben Davis, David Nori, Corey Whitaker, Snipes, Cameron Scott, and John McManus. And our Metalwork Colossi. Charles Owen, Matthew Chandler, Pulsating Kiwi, Wyatt M, Timothy Conan, Matt Oakes, Stephen Dunn, Jeremiah Lewis, Wellsford Ranger, and Joshua Jackson. Thank you, everyone. You are all awesome.